Welcome to VCR Party. I'm Joe, that's George, that's Nick, and there's Steve over there. And this is the show where we're trying to watch every single one of our 11,000 videos. And I think we're up to 41%. We're 41% of the way through. Um, but it, we, our number just grew because uh, this showed up in the mail today. Wall glazing. Oh, wow. Full cover. Um, Price is right. And then the, whoever sent it put a note on here that said, probably just Price is right. <laughs> And then Bob sent this one, Ultimate Sweater Machine. Oh, man. <laughs> Still in the shrink. 2021 is going to be a good year. Oh, We've it's going to be a it. hot year. I was putting together, uh, going. I went to the office. I found some videos that I thought were cool. This one is uh, the Lawrence Welk Show, Christmas Reunion, and New Year's Eve Party. Oh, fun. Imagine how crazy fucked up that party got. Oh, it's just uh, blow everywhere. Uh, yeah. It's just Lawrence yeah. Welk New Year's Eve party. And then I, I found this one too, because um I watched the Wonder Woman mo movie and I realized we have Linda Carter's uh, Secrets to Perfect Makeup. It's signed. What? Yeah, it's signed. It says um to I can't read the name. Lots of love, Linda Carter. Just to so, put Nick there. All right. I'm going to yeah. do this. Yeah. Kiss it. Good night. So yeah, 2021 is going to be an exciting year. And um, we wanted to, th this of course is the show uh, that we do each year where we count down our favorite VHS finds of the year and name our top video of the year, probably our most watched episode. And um, I thought before we got into the meat of it, I would start off with a, a clip I found um, from a show in Chicago as a local uh I think it's public access show called uh, um, the Union. No, the Image Union, and they had a very weird countdown on their New Year's Eve episode. It was their 10th anniversary New Year's Eve episode. Susie, you know where did you get that accent? All right, three, four, five, six, seven. It's counting up. Eight, nine, no, ten, you can't do that. It's not allowed. And they're going past count. What are they counting to? Yeah. Is that? To the new year. Oh, to the actual year. Yeah. I see. Well, they still have 1,900 more to go, right? No, yeah, they're counting to 1989, but they just... Oh. But they went to 30. They went to 30. Okay, I'm confused by that one. Well, there's very little context around it. But yeah, it was the weirdest thing. Instead of counting down at 10 seconds down to one, they 30 seconds before midnight, they counted up to 30. And was then it like on channel 30? No, it wasn't on channel yeah, 30. Yeah, I was, I was well, like, what's the significance of 30? Don't know. They just started 30 seconds before uh, the new year, before midnight and counted down. And Do you know, you know what? Are Good. they space aliens who just arrived to Earth and yes. they're trying to figure out how to be human? Oh, that then that explains yeah, it. That's ex well, here's what I was thinking. For EP mode this week, I got a bunch of weird New Year's Eve videos I found. Um, and there's that one by the host of New Age Miracles. Remember that one? Where is it about Y2K? It's about Y2K. Yes. And, yeah, it has that great intro. So I was thinking, well, let's just put together compilation of like a half hour of great new year's eve clips from our like we have the, the spock the uh, leonard nimoy y2k preparedness video oh yeah that's classic yeah, yeah so we just put a bunch of those together and then we air it 
like uh, at 11.30 p.m. this Thursday, and people can watch that as their uh, Dick Clark countdown. No one will, but... Uh, <laughs> and we'll count up to 30. Yeah. Uh, right? It'll be 30 we, minutes, but we'll count up. Yes, right. every, every minute. Um, so that's the idea. Um, we want to uh, thank everybody for their support this year. This is a weird, weird year for, I mean, for everybody, but... Um, George and I, I know I was rewatching some some of the shows before we started doing remote, and it all just feels like a weird time capsule now. George, what was your observation? You were watching a quarantine's classics, our first. Yeah, the first one that we filmed right after you guys got. We filmed a VCR party in the quarantine classics right when you guys got back from England, and um, Steve was Steve was sick, and we were and Joe was joking, maybe Steve's gonna die, and then he said, well, but if Steve dies, we have to cut that. But we were talking about how it's we'll be we'll probably be back in a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> we probably have to quarantine for a couple of weeks. And <laughs> oh yeah, not even close. Here we are. Right, yeah. and the whole thing looks like it was staged for a future movie about the pandemic, where people all the things we're saying look like sound like uh, like totally over the top, considering what ended up happening. You know, I think it was all like the end, but like, okay, so yeah, it was a sucky year, but like, I don't know. I think there's some good things that came out of it. IMGs, some, uh, and I think that's it, IMGs. <laughs> but um, I put together a little thing at the end. Zach sent in a song and I added some videos to it and I actually got a little emotional. I was just like looking back at like Turd Flush, um, some of the shows that we did, Quarantine Classics, uh, Which Thumb is Steve and just, you know, just I got a little. I like, I like, I like how Turd yeah. Flesh was the first one you mentioned. Yeah. The most forgettable <laughs> segment we did. This the first year. one that popped in my head. So, <laughs> uh, just just some some brief year end stats. Before we went on lockdown, we did do twenty seven live shows. We were in the UK and the US. We had you know probably eighty shows that never materialized or were canceled because of the pandemic. But we did fifty two VCR party episodes. This one included seventeen episodes of Saturday morning cartoons. Um, 13 episodes of Willie's Garage, 14 episodes of Frenchie and the Creep. Uh, 20 do you, do you think I, hey, do you think I could come on as a guest on Willie's Garage someday? Absolutely. You just have to watch the Elf episode beforehand. Can, can I just like get like an Elf beach towel or something and sure. just like that's bring all that? That's all okay, and just be yeah. like, I found this Elf beach towel. Yeah, that's the whole second half of the show. So, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, we've got uh, 20 episodes of Quarantine Classics and then 47. 47 EP mode episodes. I would so, say 20 episodes of Quarantine Classics, but maybe 16 good ones. I feel like it, it wore out. High, huh? you think, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking like the last few episodes really felt like uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they didn't need to be there. Everybody I watched the last the two. They were funny. Were they yeah. good? Yeah, but only because they're phoned the, in. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So we started doing you know, once the pandemic, we realized we we're going to be in this for the long haul. We started doing EP mode episodes, which are a bonus episode where we watch basically a whole video or a compilation of videos um, w without editing. And, you know, usually we bring on special guests. We did 47 of those this year. So almost as many as we, we did used to just party. do them once a month. Yeah. So if you're a Patreon member, you get all that bonus content for free. Four live webinars, including the reunion of the Computer Beach Party cast, Notch in Our Belt. Uh, the Primetime America's Funniest IMG Special. I told it up. It's 170 plus hours of stuff in 2020, which is pretty it, huge. It, it, but how many good? Um, like, that's what I want to know. Like you say 20 episodes of Quarantine Classics, but how many good? I no, think it, it, it's all about quantity. I think that's what I look for. It's just <laughs> how many hours. That's quantity over quality. That's what yep. Nick's always said. Yep. <sighs> Uh, and anyway, and there's some big bombshells this year too, right? Oh yeah, I put together uh, some of the biggest bombshells. I, I, I put it together in video form. So um, this first one, the first, do you remember? Um, I think it was probably in March. So we had been playing this video called uh, Chinese Love Making Secrets. This is the this is the this is my opinion of the bombshells that happened this year. Do you remember this video? Of course, you remember this video. It's like this is your life. Yeah. This is a uh, Chinese lovemaking. Cup your testicles with your left hand, completely covering them. And we've had this Do video for several years. Too hard. With your right hand, massage the stomach in a clockwise motion 81 times. 81. We had we had that video for several years. We had Theo come on, who who's our our art guy. He's our art correspondent, and he brought on Chinese lovemaking secrets. 
And he showed me, he's like, remember the thing at the beginning? I was like, no, I don't remember the thing at the beginning. Well, this was the major bombshell of Chinese lovemaking secrets. After there many were two extra scenes. Study, I agree. Jim is a trained master of the ancient art of Kung Fu and is the yeah. only American that wasn't an ours. mind that can demonstrate How could they leave that out? strength by yeah. lifting over this 150 is the Zack pounds of genitals. Yeah, and then there's this other bonus Shi scene here. The training that you were looking at is called Shi Sui, or bone marrow Shi Sui. <laughs> this training was Taoist in origin. It's like bonus scenes teacher, in this Richard video that we've known so well. 65 yeah. years ago. Men are James traditionally hunter-gatherers, so they can hold more weight, weight on their genitals. He lifting approximately 200 pounds. <sighs> so, and then that spawned a lot of great things like this. Remember Zach sent in this photo of Nick? Yeah, less of a, of a bombshell, more of just kind of a creepy drawing, but uh, yeah. But, it, and uh, you know, my birthday's coming up. And I think we had talked about it. And I don't think you gave a definitive answer. But will you put, for my birthday, January 17th, will you put at least like a five-pound weight on it and swing it back and forth? I'm going to give a definitive answer tonight. No. What? Why? <laughs> I don't want to stretch my genitals out. I just don't. It's, it's too it's late just in the life shaft to do it part. on your own. It's just the shaft part. It's not your whole genitals. I don't even it's know how I'd shaft. fix it. Like, tape? We'll figure I mean, it out. Yes, tape. We'll do tape. We'll get some duct tape. Uh, I, I'll take it under consideration. How's that? Okay, thank you. St yeah. Start thinking about my birthday, by the way. Um, next up, we st so when we started doing Quarantine Classics, we started showing bad photos of ourselves. And Steve brought in this one of him and quarterback, Hall of Fame quarterback or no? Did he nope, not, not in the Hall of Fame. Did not make the Hall of Fame. Uh, Jim Plunkett. And uh, we noticed that Steve looked like a thumb. And the term Plunkett's was born because of this, because this is Steve's number one Plunkett. And Steve was always number one Plunkett. Then Melinda's got creative and they started sending in thumbs of Steve. Steve's on their thumbs. There's, <laughs> I did that one. Um, thumb saying I'm Steve. Didn't spend that much time on it. Somebody sent that in. So that was, that was big for, for uh, this year. That was a major bombshell. Huge show. bombshell. Kind of. Yeah. Yep. Um, another bombshell was meeting Dark Lord Blood. Dark Lord Blood was uh, in this local New York daytime talk show about Satanism, and uh, he growls in it, and he growled for us, which was huge. Nice. It's being sold for that reason. There's something called an But it's also being sold for healthy reasons. Man, what's healthy about selling a knife to this or this? I wasn't just going to be able to talk back and forth. That's boring. That's stupid. You know what I mean? So you go right for the throat. Oh. You still got it. <laughs> Never goes away. Major bombshell. Meeting Huge. dark blood, blood going out there. Huge. Totally normal, down to earth guy. I think the biggest one is this one, Chris from McSee. Chris, this McSee video is the first video that we really got us started on Found Footage Festival. Uh, yeah, found, found this in, in yeah, 1991, working at a McDonald's, found the McDonald's training video. And I mean, training videos don't have credits at the end. So who, who knows who the actors are in it? But yeah, go ahead. But George, George put on his sleuthing hat and he tracked him down. And... Well, it was Tyler, I believe, who found the name. Oh, that's right. In a trailer, but I was the one who harassed him into <laughs> appearing on the show. Exactly. It, it was a team effort of <laughs> harassment. And so just here's a clip from uh, McSee. So when do I start? Right now. Come on. Great. Finesse that wall. That's the way. So after several months, we finally met up and it was you know it was the middle of quarantine it was middle of summer middle of quarantine middle of lockdown so we all had to wear masks uh but we got to meet him through our car windows year of bombshells so emotional um yeah Backward blood and chris from mixie that's pretty big and then also nick did you bring up the you got the rem lazar one i did yeah so we found this video actually our buddy andrew novick gave us this kids video called creating rem lazar a strange uh low budget kids video made in the 80s uh here's a clip from it we played this in i don't know like an early show
watch all movie? Or? Yeah. So this was a guy, we found out his name is Jack Mulcahy. He was an actor in New York. And I think our second to last show before going with virtual shows, he came in and was one of the best guests we've ever had. Funny. Uh, here's a little bit of us uh, conjuring him. What, what did you say? You said that he could be, we could create him and then he, he could show up? That's, that's what he said. I, okay. I mean, well, I, with what? What are we supposed to create him I with? I mean, like in there, they, they had like a mannequin, they had like yeah, a mop, a with, 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 they spray painted a mop blue. Converse and, Ulster, what do we have uh, um, lying around? I have a box of tapes from uh, Bob Hedges. Oh yeah, this okay. This could be the torso. Okay, I have this, uh, this head that an art student made that we found this at a thrift store, uh, okay. and it, it's by my desk. Okay. Yeah. That could be it. All right. What All else? Right, this is precarious. There's a rejuvenate face mask. We could throw that on there. Okay. And here's like a cape. This is a California raisin uh, costume. This okay. could be the cape. Okay. Here's and a here's a Gary pin. I'll just toss that right there. That's essential. Yeah. And then uh, what? Oh. Nothing's happening. No, yet. no, no. Here, here. Let me try this. Just sprinkle some Batman cereal over it. Okay. All right. Let's see what happens. No, okay. Marty's interested Anything? in it, okay. but no, do not eat it's this. It's made Marty. by Purina. It's made yeah, by Purina. Yeah, it's okay. But no. Um, but nothing's Shoot. happening. Well, you know what? Here, here's the thing. I think we need to believe. That's right. That's the yeah. missing ingredient. We need to believe in Ram Lazar. Let's believe in Jack Mulcahy. Believe, believe in Jack Mulcahy. Mulcahy. Believe in Jack Mulcahy. Believe in Jack Mulcahy. We created Jack Mulcahy. It worked. He's here. It actually worked. Quixotic vision you did. Oh, nice reference. And he still got it, too. <laughs> yeah. Still got it. And there we got to meet, we got to create and meet the actual Rem Lazar. Wow. God, I miss being in the office. The show's 10 times better in the office, isn't it? Yeah, I think most people would agree with that. So hopefully in 2021, we can get back there. Um, and uh, yeah, so those are some, some of the big bombshells from uh, 2021. Of course, I also inserted a piece of Batman cereal in my rectum for your birthday last year. Oh yeah, that's um, right. I, you know, that one shocked me. I like, if, if, like, I can't believe that you won't dangle a five pound weight from your, from your wiener because the putting a Batman cereal up your anus seems way worse to me. I agree. And I'm never going to do that again. So. And, and then I, you even learned, tied like. I learned tied, my like, lesson tampon string to it too so that you can get it out right yeah yeah because i didn't want to be fishing it out afterwards so yeah I, and then our lawyer sat around the corner to make sure that you did it right and yeah, watched he, he observed it yeah and did you actually put it up your anus absolutely that's why i don't want to do it again i'm not anxious to do anything like that again um but this, this one's more wiener based and that guy was doing like 200 pounds like i'm just asking you to do five pounds that's true it's not a big ask well we'll see what happens on your birthday um wait 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 I'm turning 45. Maybe you could do a 45 pound weight. Oh yeah. All right. Yeah, sure. That's a lot less than, than 200. Um, we released our first puzzle this year. Those are selling like hotcakes. You can still get your puzzle. Um, in what, highlights did, didn't here. you have another uh, bombshell of uh, not going to do it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So this was, a we had on uh, Dan Opsel, who is a comedy writer, and filmmaker, and he is, a, he collects flubs. He's got a big collection of flubs. And we talked about, he played, uh, he told us the journey of him finding this long lost flub of, who was it that said better luck next time, Chucky? Was it? Jared Leto? Yeah, I think it was Jared Leto said it on the MTV. Somebody like that. Awards. No, no, no. Oh, it's not. I'll think of it. Go ahead. Keep talking. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, and I was like, you know, and he was finally able to track that down. And we talked for a long time about, um, could Stephen we? Stephen Dorff. Steven Dorf, yes. He's supposed to say better luck next time, Chucky. And he said better luck nux time, Chucky. And he thought it was a fever dream and maybe he misremembered it, but no, it turns out it was correct. Somebody tracked it down. And so we mentioned this long lost one from like a 1990 Saturday Night Live episode where it was the Mother's Day primetime special. Dana Carvey's mom came on and he said, come on, mom, aren't you going to do a George Bush impression? And she was supposed to say, not going to do it. And instead she said, not going to do it. That was our memory of it. And no one, even people we knew who worked like at SNL, they couldn't find it. And then finally somebody sent it in. They said, is this it? 
No, do you know who sent it in? Who was it? Honeydew Wilkins sent yes. it in. That's right, Honeydew Wilkins. <laughs> That's a yeah. name you don't forget. That's right. He's been an amazing contributor this year. And here's that long lost clip that was found in 2020. Well, Mom, who could cause you to behave in such a manner? Could it be Satan? Satan, Satan, Satan? <laughs> no. Good echo, Mom. <laughs> Maybe George Bush. It wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. I'm uh, gonna doubt that. <laughs> no, how about Carl? She's a babe. If, if she were a president, she'd be Abraham Lincoln. So it's more of a not gonna doubt it. It was, you not know. Not gonna doubt it. Yeah, it's it was, almost like a doubt it. Yeah. yeah, but it was, it's been found. That was another huge bombshell. It's funny how your brain just kind of just contorts things slightly to not gonna doubt it. It's, yes. It'll still be not going to do it to me, but but yeah, still, that was that was a major bombshell. So many bombshells this year. It was a huge year. Yep. We also had we did our EP mode episode. So if people liked one kid's opinion, the uh, kids review of Disneyland. We had we have the kid on watching it with us. Rent a friend. Watch Rent a friend with us this year. We tracked down the Rubik's Cube kid. He watched the video with us. Uh, John Glazer watched the Moose Lodge video. We had a home shopping host watch John and Johnny and home shopping. So. There's just a ton of special guests this year, and uh, it was a good year for us all around, I think. I would say that's the best part of doing these Zooms that, and, and during a lockdown, because everybody's available. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we got guests who, who would never otherwise come into our office. Yeah, so we can, we can corner these people. Yeah, they yeah. Can't, we couldn't avoid them. Should we talk about Steve's background? Yeah, what do you got, Steve? Let's do Lost it. That's one of my favorite things now. about 2020 was getting to interact with all the Melindas. Um, this week, um, Kurt and his wife were Melinda's from Salem, Oregon. They have a yarn company, um, bosskittyshop.com, and they're giving all the Melinda's, uh, does this way I have to go? Yeah, save 20% with the code Melinda21. And I thought this might be a good uh, opportunity for someone to make the placenta that Joe asked for. Oh, yeah. You, you asked for that placenta. I actually have the uh, screen grab of it. I can just throw up quickly for those who don't remember. From a life on the but farm. Joe asked for Yes, which, thank which you. was the 2019 uh, video winner. Video of the year uh, from last year. Video yeah. of the year, yeah. Well, if any of the Melinda's out there want to f fulfill Joe's dream and have him, what would you say, a throw you want or a shawl or what are you uh, looking for? Uh, well, I, I was thinking maybe just like like four four coasters that are placentas, knitted placenta coasters. Knitted placenta coasters. Well, there you go. I'll well, take this a is shawl. a good opportunity. You can go to bosskittyshop.com, buy your yarn there, and you'll get 20% off. Good old sellout, Steve. I like that one. My mom might use that code. She's a she's a knitter. One thing we've been doing, another big part of 2020 has been the uh, This Week in Flying Windows. That segment's really taken off because we realized a lot of these videos from the 80s and 90s had flying windows in their intros at some Not point. a lot of them. I would say 92% of them have a flying window at yeah. some point. Of all these videos on our shelves, they all have flying windows. And so you don't have to look far. To find a flying window so but i think we've been showing it for since i don't know last summer since like july or yep. so so we have about six months worth of flying windows saved up and we gave it to our buddy robert who uh trash can he does trash can cinema and we said here they are because i didn't want to see it so i wanted it to be a surprise so this is this is going to be a surprise here i sent him the music i sent him uh, all the flying windows and this is what he brought back to us so this um, is the all the flying windows from six months put into flying windows so it's flying windows of flying windows yes. it's gonna it's gonna blow all of our minds whoa wow i don't even know how he has that technology it's like a flying window within a flying window within the flying window there and look at how that one flew whoa that's cool Find that background, or did you? I found it. I sent it to him. Cool. He's also playing b-ball. Look at these flying windows! They're rocking. Whoa! I would say there's too many flying windows. Wow! Oh my God! Oh yeah. The finale wow. nice job robert thank you robert that was what'd you guys think i wanted to watch that on new year's eve yeah end with the explosion um all right 
what do, do we want? Do we want to get into it? Do we want to jump we in? Should. I think let's we should. Jump in. Yep. Uh, let's get into uh, what are we calling this? Our top 20 videos show us your ravioli or top videos of 2020 ravioli. The top, the top raviolis of 2020. Okay. 2020's top raviolis. <laughs> America's next top ravioli. <laughs> Sure, let's go with that. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us 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 your raviolis. We mentioned that last year was A Life on the Farm. Was That's the home movie that um, a guy we met in Milwaukee uh, gave us of his uh, grandpa's neighbor's uh, who's a farmer and just recorded his life on the farm. We thought it was so unusual that we named it our uh, video of the year, but also we started making a documentary on it and um, or helping produce one. And uh, that should come out later this year. So that was That's uh, what happens. If you get yeah. named the VCR party's top ravioli of the year, you're going to get a documentary made about you. <laughs> yeah. It changes your life. Um, yeah. The other runner ups last year, just as a reminder, because some people were, are still disappointed by the results of this, but uh, skateboard surfing, um, skier size, learn to sing overnight. And then hotel hell, which was the hotel. Hell was incredible. Yeah. It was a uh, hip to the load in music as people were loading into a hypnotist show and i feel like watching that right now i don't have it loaded up it's on a different hard drive but i would play that right now man i haven't uh, watched that in a while the wilford brimley diabetes dirt versus diabetes edit that you did was also uh in consideration so that is hall of fame material and i think and and that just that just hit a million views on youtube amazing yeah yes the other one that hit big this year was the alex trebek um you know, swearing outtakes from Jeopardy one after oh, he yeah. died, that got like 5 million views. So I think the, the lesson is dead celebrities uh, are really our ticket out of this. Album. <laughs> we just got to kill. Yeah. We just got to be checking the obituaries every day and getting, getting Adobe premiere ready. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Cha-ching. Yep. Cha-ching. Every cha-chinging moment. All right. I have some honorable mentions Okay. that I, I'd like to just put together a little montage of some of my, probably like in my top 10. So we we each, we each picked our top three, but there's so many we left out, and you've got a bunch that I, I do too. So yeah, so these are my honorable mentions for 2020. These aren't in my top three, but they should be. I, I was watching them today, and I was like, oh, maybe I made a mistake here. Some um, heartbreaking decisions in this. Yeah, but uh, take a look. Here's uh, the this first one is uh, Pee Pee by the Kelly family. Do you remember mm, this? This is absolutely. kind of a this is kind of like a skateboard surfing last year, how it was kind of just like a sleeper. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't really, nobody really talked about it during the year, but when it was on, it was just like, whoa, this is incredible. Steris does this one. And uh, here's PP by the Kelly family. so good and i don't remember the context is this the heaven's gate group <laughs> exactly no but i think that i i don't remember the context but i think it was like kind of culty yeah the father like was the, like the, the bengali uh sort of leader of his family band and yeah and they all wrote an original song and danced and sang to a packed fucking auditorium i ain't gonna pee pee my bed tonight yeah they were big overseas i believe this was in germany where this was recorded i don't think they were big were well, they big? They must have been big if they if they sold out that. I mean, there was a lot of people. It looked like there were a lot of people. I that. think they were bigger overseas than in the United States. Not like exactly. Hino big. But no, not big. not Hino big. Not David Hasselhoff big, but still uh, not Alf big, but pretty big in Germany. Another one that that popped up in Quarantine Classics was Dave Hawkins sent a he videotaped himself after he went to a sushi restaurant and his lip grew really big because he thought he might have to do some sort of a lawsuit or something or he needed to show it to a lawyer that his lip was engorged from the from the shellfish 
And uh, so this is the video that he sent. And just got back from Jakula Sushi Place. And uh, as you can see, my lip is swollen. Like, a lot. I like this being played in a deposition. <laughs> Lawyers sitting around. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got something here. And the best the best are the lip smacks and just yeah. like and he, you know he's not trying to be funny here. I think no. he's, I think he's like genuinely like like my lip is swollen. Yeah. I don't see it. It looks normal to me. Lips are swollen. My throat isn't swollen. Nothing else is going on. It's just my bottom lip and a little bit of my top lip over here. I had the Icelandic volcano, <laughs> so I'll never have that again. And then I put together all the lip specs. <laughs> Great, I remember that. <laughs> uh, here's E.T. Rock from Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, who sent this? Uh, Jessica sent us this. We don't get oh. a lot of public access anymore because it's kind of dying off. Mm -hmm. And it was exciting to get this because this is a... A public access show. They this guy writes his original rock music and then he makes music videos for it and he puts it on on the air. And I think this is probably in the '90s. But uh, Jessica introduced. Me to it. You want public action. Yeah. I'd watch this every week. I think it's genuinely a good song, too. Shining Star, ETR, ready for us. And the guy just looks like he works at a shoe store. You know? Yeah. He's just like the most unassuming rock star. But he does this kind of psychedelic yeah. jet ski footage. Here's another one of my favorites. It was a Taco Bell Rock. home movie. Evan sent us the one. You remember yeah, this? Absolutely. Home one of movies. My favorites. Home yeah, movies. Absolutely one of my favorites. Oh, it's so good. It, this is like a Richard Linkletter movie. And it's just, they, it's like a hose plant that we had mm -hmm. last year, or maybe two years ago was hose plant. And a, a guy who worked at Taco Bell just brought in a camcorder and videotaped his buddies working at Taco Bell. They worked in a mall in the suburbs of Denver. And uh, just here's some clips from that. What are you doing there? He's just standing around like, like hey, you're fine. Roger. <laughs> cool. That's the manager. Wait, let's get him focus real close. Then they'd go across the, the mall to the Naked Edge Cutlery and they sold like knives and guns hey, there. Hi. Hey, Kirk, what are you doing, man? This is the guy who's just making up, holding an actual <laughs> gun to his head. <laughs> There's a lot of fun there. So, slow day at Taco Bell. <laughs> He's got a shot. This is Dave Kirk. He handles all this. What is this security. for America's funniest? Oh, movie. can Holy. I show you something there, Steve? And he's one of the he's one of the um, Taco Bell employees. Yeah, like, they just went behind the counter. And... Yeah, just grabs a sword. <laughs> that is pretty <laughs> slick. This is my favorite. You look like he man. Country, Weapon of here. death. Let's oh, see. gotta make sure no one's at the bell. He's like, got to make sure nobody's at the bell. Yep. Like, nobody's working right now because they're all over at the knife shop. Right. Well, <laughs> must have been like 3 o'clock. Nobody's between lunch and dinner, you know. This last one is uh, another Dave Hawkins. This is a... Uh, he, he's, he, we were big on... Remember, we were big on ferrets for a second there because yeah. we showed a video and then we got ferret lax and then we were calling up the ferret lax company. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he... And then I was big on filth, too. I was doing my filth corner at that point. And so Dave sent this in. He said, this marries... Uh, your ferret love with your filth love, and it was him cleaning out his ferret's ears. No. And I just want to stress you know. this is our most watched show of the year. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta Go clean ahead. something out, and we gotta clean out his ears. Okay, perfectly white tip. One more time. Here we go. Now, when we scrub him, he gets a little tired, and he, but it doesn't hurt him at all. It's just our way of like holding on to him so he doesn't He's also get away. A hundred percent deaf, so there's no damage being done. Oh to his boy. Ears. Oh boy, there's a lot. He's got some. <laughs> yeah, like Dave actually gagged while while watching. <laughs>
Uh, so that's your honorable that, mention. So. That's my honorable mention. I think about that video all the time, too. And I, I know that Steve's brought it up in the past. Like, Steve, it hasn't left your memory at all. Right? Uh, it's the, my least favorite video of uh, 2020. The cleaning up the, the fair yeah, teeth? I just can't watch it. I think I gagged while, while watching it the one time. What was the part that bothers you? Is it seeing the chunks of yeah. the fair earwax or is it seeing the Q tip in the ear? No, it's definitely seeing the chunks come out. Yeah, it's just gross. No and it doesn't question. help that he's almost uh, throwing up as well. Yeah, and it's his ferrets. Yeah. yeah. Nick, what are your honorable mentions? Well, there's so many. I, I just included, did a montage. I just put them all together. So I'll just mention them. Video called Karate Size, um, Impressive One Minute Napkins, Dollywood Tourism Video, one called How to Hand Feed Hummingbirds, Basic Training for Boys, which came from Craig Rowan, uh, Rubik's Cube Solved, mentioned earlier, Pediatric Hal. Uh, oh, that's a great one. Nursing videos. That's on your top Jeff. three. No. And oh. uh, and also uh, a guitar video from Facebook by a guy from England named uh, Dave Joseph. So here are my honorable mentions. For karate Aside, a unique blending of exercise and karate techniques designed to develop the mind and positive thinking through the philosophies of ancient Korean karate with methods of exercise to deliver rapid weight loss, body firming, agility, coordination, and self-confidence. What I'm actually doing is uh, totally blanking the mind out where I am in sort of a trance state. Uh, actually, as a warrior would go into battle, they would put themselves in the same trance-like state, and uh, this would enable them to uh, withstand any injuries while in battle. Let's do something a little fun. We're going to make the baby. And there's the baby. This little fellow will really be the hit of your next baby shower. All we'll need is an old pair of pants, an old shirt, sweatshirt, or jacket, and a ball cap or some other type of hat. Could be simpler. How about you wash, all dry, and be the DJ? Cool. I don't understand a word he said. Welcome to a very special place called Dollywood. Come dine where the stars dine is the motto. And the setting is complete with backstage props and autographed items from the many performing celebrities who have dined there. Dive there. Nice and rosy and comfy, cozy are we. We're snuggled up together like two birds of a feather would be. I can't give you anything but love. Tom Osmond. Discover on Contestant on Discover Amma receives this special T-shirt courtesy of White Castle. Well, I didn't have to tell you what the last move was. Your cube is solved, and your cube will be solved too once you get to the end of stage six. Yes. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me how much your head hurts? An eight. Is this song? Fucking hell! And the unhelpful dog at the end. That's yep. my honorable mentions for 2020. What a year. Wow. You know, we, we got to get an eight at the end of the show. I, like, did, it, I did add it. Uh, I added it back in. Uh, oh, on the last? Yeah, because we had it in for a moment, and then somebody did have added a done request where they said, hey, you know, you had it in, and it was, and then it went away mysteriously, and I think it was just some kind of 
Oh, okay. Yeah. It'll, it'll be in at the end of this one, then, yes. for sure. It's been yeah. a little, little, little inconsistent with that one because we take turns editing. But yes. uh, N8 will be at the end of this show. That's a guarantee. Can we yes. get Pediatric Hal to do the countdown for New Year's Eve? <laughs> eight? <laughs> no, we'll count up to eight. Yes. Right. And then the final we'll thing. We'll start at one. Or just 38. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> eight. 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 And then the last one will be and eight. And eight. And then everybody <laughs> drinks the champagne and kisses each other. Right. Well, let's uh, get to your number three, Joe. Okay, my number three uh, was a buzzer beater this year. It came in right at the last second, and I, you know, I played it last week. It's called Lucky the Horse, and I, and I wondered, like, when I saw it, I was like, is this really gonna, you know, you let the the you plant the seed and you let it blossom, and you're you see if it will sustain. And I've been thinking about it all week, and so this is my number three. It could be my number one if I let it blossom for even longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Lucky the Horse. This was sent to us by Robert. Robert worked at a TV station in Texas, and he got this footage. This is what I love about it, is that it's footage that hasn't seen the light of day. I mean, probably he and his work buddies watched it all the time, but then he gave it to us. Like, this is pretty exclusive stuff. So that that was a factor, too. But here's Lucky the Horse. I did a little a shorter cut down than I did last week. Testing, testing, one, two. Three, two, one. Out of the 11 animals rescued, probably the most bizarre injury is that of a horse's... Three, two, one. Out of the 11 animals rescued, probably the most bizarre is that of a hole in a horse's neck the size of a fist. That horse is right here. Three, two, one. Out of the 11 animals injured, probably the most bizarre wound is that of a hole in a horse's neck the size of a fist. Veterinarians still don't know what caused the wound. It could have been from a gunshot or three, two, one. Out of the 11 animals rescued, probably the most bizarre wound is that of a hole in a horse's neck the size of a fist. Veterinarians still don't know what caused that wound, but the horse is here at the SPCA clinic where workers have affectionately called him Lucky. (laughs) Nailed it. Three, two, one. On scene at SPCA headquarters, Annie Blanco, News 24, Houston. Three, two, one. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah i mean that's number three right there i mean that boy then, and then i watch it and i'm just like oh man and you just see that the horse's dog grow longer and longer and it's just like this should be number one but, yeah it started off fairly insignificant for me but then grew and grew in my estimation and, well uh, the, you know i like i'm a i'm a tedium fan so right. I, i'm wearing i'm wearing my joe's tedium corner shirt right now like I, i'm a tedium fan so there's there's that element of tedium and the slow build it's just it's yeah. just everything i like in a clip well, I think this one might surprise you. My number three is a little video called Close Proximity Pyrotechnics. It now, was on. It was in my top list. Yeah, and I figured I, you would have had it in your top, so I didn't show it. Uh, but I don't know this video that well. You only played yeah. it one time. You should yeah. have milked it like we milked Baby Rapper. Like, I milked I Baby Rapper for an entire year. Well, this one isn't like the fan. I don't think this is maybe a fan favorite. I think it's particular. <laughs> it's kind of like how, you know, when you are really into, if you're a musician, you get into weirder and weirder music and, like, you just can't listen to mainstream <laughs> stuff anymore. This is kind of like how it's just, it sounds like it's a video about fireworks. It's like, this is how you make big fireworks displays would, for would you say cities. This is- would you say this is like the Frank Zappa of, of yeah. our videos? Like, I can't appreciate Frank Zappa. I try to appreciate Frank Zappa, but I can't. I just, I'm not, I'm not a musician. I, I'd go I just, further. I I'd, I'd say this is the Jandek of the Found Footage Festival VCR party. This is <laughs> even more obscure. Okay. And I just like the juxtaposition of this is about the most exciting industry you can be in, pyrotechnics, uh, at theatrical presentations, at, you know, fireworks shows, and... Here's the explosive video, Close Proximity Pyrotechnics. Get ready. There's a fireworks news in association with. That's a weird time. In theater since I was 14. And I've been working with close proximity for 25 years. 
uh, the last many years, I've wait, been wait, working post? over what, in Europe. What is she drinking? Is, is that a Dr. Pepper? It looks like maybe a Fago. It doesn't look like a... Oh. Uh, I don't think it's a brand name. Okay, it's an off-brand. Okay. Which, anyway, most people in this convention for pyrotechnic... And also, is that a garbage can back there by the door? Yep, garbage can. Okay. We get to gotcha. see the door. And uh, there's an overhead projector. And yep, so... Let's got it. Keep these and there's a person's head? Yeah, there's the a back person's of a person's head, head right there in the frame? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. <laughs> The most important thing in close proximity pyrotechnics is the first thing you have to do is a risk analysis. This model was walking down, you know, the runway and I shot that thing off. She walked right off the front of the stage. She couldn't see it anymore. I felt really bad. Um, toxic or obnoxious gases. You have to just find out yourselves what your state requires, if you need a license there or not. But you will need evidence of insurance. So people walk in and they're all distracted by it, even the presenter. You can kill a lot of people or injure a lot of people. And it's important, and please, I hope you all have something with you. Please, Wednesday, when you come, you need to wear cotton, but they have a safety oh, inspector. This was a three-day convention, by the way. <laughs> this video is so good. We got to watch it more often. Yeah. It could be an EP mode. Every larger plant who goes around, it's usually another woman, and she says, show me. Show me your underwear. <laughs> show me what you're wearing underneath. Because we as women, we like to wear cute bras with lace. And you, know, and you don't find a lot of cotton stuff around either. The one who did not have on his safety glasses, had these tremendous blisters on his eyeballs. And when they shot it off, the uh, uh, piece of metal shrapnel went flying through the guy, tore his, I can't think in English what it is, but it's the thing that makes red blood cells. Spleen. spleen. It's tore, it's spleen. milts in German. He uh, tore his uh, spleen open and he bled to death right there before they could get him to the hospital. And that's explain beginners proximity fireworks. Yes. The title is Explain Beginners Proximity yes. to Fireworks. Okay. And that was like volume three. So somewhere out there, we found that one. It was on DVD, but. Um, there's more. There's more oh, volumes of that. That's so. so good. That should yeah. be number one. Well, wait, wait till I see the rest. What, what's okay. your number two? The, my number two is uh, Metalhead Teens. Uh, J Joshua Code in Huntsville he sent this sent this to us. Uh, they have a, a YouTube page uh, called Eric and Daryl, and we have them on the show. But what they do? They shot when they were kids. When they were like probably in middle school they had camcorders and they would like, like you and I, Nick, like we yep. they videotape each other just doing dumb shit, running around, like going to the grocery store. Just like, it's just fun to be on camera. It's fun to hit the zoom button. It's fun to hit record, but now they're older. They're like our age and they know how to edit. And they took all these old videos and they edited them and they added music to it. And it's brilliant. Great idea. This, is, this is the video that I shared most that I just texted to people and I emailed to people. I just sent this one out to everybody because I loved it so much. So this is the, I, I think he calls it Metalhead Teens. It's from 1989. Is this where they and, go into the record store? Yeah, but I didn't take that part. I, my yeah. favorite part was when they go into the grocery store yes. and they just loiter for a really long time. <laughs> and the woman working there just looks irritated uh, as she should be. Um, so this is just like a minute. Of, of this 17 minute long video. Everybody should, should watch the full thing. Oh, how would you boys like to vacuum the living room and dining room? Well, I think it's about time for us to be going to the store now, Daryl. Hi. Let's go. We're leaving Daryl's house now. We're going to go up the street to the store. Cloverdale Drive. Okay. We're a dollar and get all kinds of stuff. Oh, no. That's a minute of sin. What happened to the sweet tarts? For you that bought this. Did you hear what he said there? He said, What like, happened to the sweet tarts? Yeah, what happened to the sweet tarts? <laughs> it's like, what a kid. What a kid of, like, who's, you know, doesn't want for much, you know, like, just like a bored kid would. That's what is the most concerning thing is that sweet tarts aren't there anymore. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this, he's like actual, this, this is like actual Wayne and Garth, like, for yeah. real. 
Earth. Didn't he lead yeah. into it with uh, they committed a sin? Wait, what? Didn't before that he go, oh, they committed a sin. And the sin was they moved the sweet tarts. Did I miss <laughs> oh, you that? Yeah, let's oh, listen, listen to it. Listen, listen, listen. For a dollar, I get all kinds of stuff. Oh, no. They committed a sin. Yeah. What happened to the sweet tarts? What happened to the sweet tarts? <laughs> he committed a sin. What happened to the sweet tarts? And there's a longer scene with that with that poor woman who has to work there, and and you know that she knows she's on a first name basis with them. They must come in every single day, and they just buy ten cent laffy taffies. This is her reacting to that ferret earwax scene, actually. <laughs> what happened to the sweet tarts? For you that bought this tape. Yes, McCabry has her own tape out. It's an interview tape with me and Daryl. Now this is the remade cover because the front cover, the first cover was only five of them because it took so long to make. It's called McCabry Life at End. Larry and Daryl here at my house. At his house. So, whether you like it or, or you, you don't, don't like it, it sit, sit down and learn to love, love it. it. Because, whoa! McCaffrey is the very best thing going today. Diamonds are forever. And so is McCaffrey. Pretty metal with that fluffy dog. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I love is that they, they added the music to it. And yeah. it's just when you were a kid making these camcorder videos, that's how you pictured it in your head. And right. now they're actually making it how they pictured it in their heads. Yeah, it's like the it's like the you know the special edition versions that George Lucas did of the Star Wars movies, but this is like the good version of that, where the changes are good. They added some cool music. Yes, for sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd like to I see the originals, but yeah. When I first saw that, I thought that it was all staged. I thought that like mm -hmm. the kids were cast, and that they you know that somebody got them the Battle of the Air Bands shirts, and like I thought I thought the whole thing was set up, but it's not. It's a hundred percent real, and they yeah. have so many more videos like this on. What is it, Eric and Daryl? Yeah, Daryl, D-A-R-R-E-L-L. -L. Yeah, Eric and yes. Daryl on YouTube. Check them out. Yeah, I love that. Well, this, this is, uh, my number two is a video that is not my number one because it, it has roots in earlier stuff. It's the magical rainbow sponge supercut of stuff we've never shown before. So D. Grunig, uh, this is a video we found in Ohio. It's uh, this crafting woman who's very excited about sponge techniques that she's invented the magical rainbow sponge and we had other videos by her we had the magical metallic rainbow sponge we had much more magical rainbow sponge we had stamping she put out a bunch of other crafting videos there's and like it, 15 of them over there and they're all two hours yeah. long and i think we just never wanted to dive into them well this year i decided we got nothing but time i'm going to dive into these really long degruining videos see if we can mine some more gems and it turns out she's just a gold mine of more stuff. So here is a supercut of the stuff we haven't shown in previous montages, the Magical Rainbow Sponge Supercut. Hi, I'm Dee Grunig, and I'm back with another video. Oh my gosh, is this fun. How fun that is. Is this fun or what? Is this great and fun or what? Are they fun or what? It's fun, 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 more fun. Oh. Is it ever fun? Shake, shake, shake. Ink, ink, ink. Wash, wash, wash. Is that enough rainbows for us? Oh, there's so many things I have to clear up. Wow, scrunch it in that. <clears throat> oh, with the edges? You know, because I could go on tiling the rest of my life. Pardon the sound. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. 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 Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Here's a wiggle. Just a wiggle across. Wiggles. 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 Look at that. Look at that. I mean, can you believe it? Oh, for over the top. <laughs> I love this paper. I love blow pens. Be all that you can be. Oh. Now, what do I do with these frames? Oh, what don't I do with those frames? Look at the difference here. It's softer and more subtle. I don't like subtle that much, but it looks good. Oh, oh, it's just, oh, so much. Let's stamp it out. <sighs> Are they incredible? 
incredible or what? And look at that. Where can you get a plaid like that? You just can't. You just love the drama. It's just fabulous. I mean, is this cool or not? I mean, it's just great. I don't know about you, but I love Altoids, especially the new winter cream. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. 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 Ooh, ah. Uh. Yes. Oh, 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 I want a shirt. Oh, oh, oh. oh gasp. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, woo. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, 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 okay, okay. Ah, whoa. Oh, boy. Who? Oh, oh, oh. 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 I want you to experiment. Oh. Oh. Wow. Mm. Ooh. Oh. Goodness. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Uh. Oh. What fun. Yes. Okay. Ooh. Yes. Yes. Oh. Uh. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. 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 Wow. I've never done that before. Wow. Oh. I can go on and on and on. Oh, I could go on and on, and I will always keep sponging. Always keep sponging. I think it's a positive. I was looking for positivity in 2020, and I felt like D is the, the poster child for positivity. Well, I feel like, I watched that, and I feel like she should have been a star. Like, she was a star, I think, in, in the internet and maybe in a small, like, the stamping circles. Yes. But I think she should have been Martha Stewart. You know, she had a hall. Did she have a Hallmark show? I think she no. was on a Hallmark show as a yeah. regular guest, but she should have been a household name. She's so good. I agree. Yeah. She's so enthusiastic. She gets into it. She's a great honor. She's doing all these crafting techniques and also hosting and getting excited. And I know we try to track her down. Maybe 2021 is the year where she finally thinks we're good guys and comes on the show. Maybe yeah. over Zoom. George found her. I think that a lot of internet trolls maybe like, and she saw some, like somebody made a fake Twitter page of her name and, you know, it was kind of mean spirited and not very funny. And she probably saw that and she's like, fuck the internet. Yeah. I'm done with it. And then she hears from us and she's like, oh, these are the internet trolls. So no, D, if you're watching, you're not, but we love Sorry you about and that. we want to meet you. Sorry about the fair earwax, but we would love to meet you and treat you with the great, <laughs> greatest respect. Hey, before we give him number one, why don't we uh, see what George and Steve has? Yeah, let's do that. Cooking. What do you guys got? Uh, George, what do you got? You got anything? You got any favorites? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm going to do some uh, some outsider picks. Um, I'm going to describe them and then just show uh, the clips. Okay. Um, the first is an IMG, the one that uh, would have won um, America's Funniest Home Videos if IMGs had existed in the 80s, late 80s. Uh, the second is the two word challenge, which is when um, Nick and Joe do live shows. Um, Joe challenges Nick to work in some terms that nonsensical terms. But the thing to watch is Joe's reaction to Nick inserting the phrases, <laughs> which is just befuddlement. He's 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 thrilled and, and loses his place. Well, the thing is, I can't do the two word phrase challenge because then I get screwed up and then I start laughing and then I just I lose my place. But then Nick can do it. But then I still screw up and lose my place and start <laughs> laughing. So, yeah. And, and finally, it's uh, which thumb is Steve and how that um, evolved from plunketing where Steve it's he so innocently shows the photo he has no idea what is in store for him then you had which thumb is steve which viewers loathed and then um and then you brought somehow brought it back and made me laugh until i cried and that's why oh. uh, and so here we go let's, All right. let's watch those number three here we number go eight <laughs> well, what we have here oh yes is a boat I mean, Meter this long. maybe this should be the number one video of the year. I didn't. Could be number one. It sounds like seven views. Don't know what to do. He's going to make a go for it here. There he goes. Horrible decision making. Yeah. No, nope, didn't make it yet. Horrible decision. <laughs> this time. He could have gotten out right there. Come on, let's go. It's up, 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 up. Here you go. Yep, 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 yep. yep. Just, no, no, not no. <laughs> Every time. Every time. Two-word challenge. 
everybody. All right, next up, I'm going to go ahead and say this is the greatest video series of all time. More That's so a, than uh, more so than Easy Sausage Making. Well, yes, ten times better than Easy Sausage. I don't know. Making. I'm seeing I'm seeing a part about here where he's making pork boxes, whatever that is. So okay, yeah, I don't know. So, like, better Call Saul. He got now he's on What We Do in the Shadows. He was on HBO's Room 104 as the Tickle Doctor. Yeah, yes. And uh, <laughs> and most of what you're going to be seeing are like live on the air screw ups. They're reporting about basketball murderers or a local fast food restaurant. That's a costume to wear. Was it comfortable? Was it, it looked it, it was kind extreme. of new? No, it was not comfortable at all. And I think it was a little too revealing. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. yeah. You're, you're a real itchy daddy in that, I guess. And you're just like, it did, <laughs> yeah. did not look comfortable at all. <laughs> That's one way you could put it. Ooh, gravel burn. Did you see yeah. the, uh, <laughs> that, that shot too? It really emphasized the carpet flakes. Yeah. You could see how dirty the carpet was there. I love that really about good. it. So I had signature dishes like strawberry torment with a side of torture butter. And, and the news anchors believe this, my, but my best dish was something we called turbo gravy. I don't know why tonight I'm just noticing the carpets and all these. There's like embarrassing lint. There's little things on it. They didn't, they, could they vacuum before they tape a public access show once? Uh, but anyway, the uh, important thing is, is that we went what oh I, I was just your your carpet rant confused me. i'm sorry i just yeah. that's one thing i'm fixating on tonight. here it is number one. Oh boy uh, i had the opportunity to go to the rose bowl again we could go and interact with celebrities and one of the celebrities i got to meet is in this next photo it's jim plunkett the quarterback I forgot it was at the rose bowl and Oh boy, I can't believe we're gonna show this here. Like, <laughs> There's so much going on. is ashamed. I, I, I prefer the the one not, of my breasts over that. Not to not to be not to be. <laughs> but I honestly, I think you kind of look. I think you kind of look like a thumb. You know. <laughs> it's time for which thumb is Steve? All right, so this is the game where I am going to show you guys two thumbs picture of two thumbs and you have to guess which of those two thumbs is steve all right here's your first thumb there it is take a good look at it and here's your second thumb there we go <laughs> so i got a new game this week and i hope you're real excited when you see it it's called which theme is stuffed okay so here's how here's how we play it all right, I'm going to show you two stubs, and only one of those stubs is theme. Okay. Quarantine classics probably went on about it's, it's five to which, too many which episodes, Steve, but it's different. All right. No questions. I think we're all on the same page here. <laughs> Great. Here is your first stub. <laughs> okay. We go. Uh, and here's your second stub. Okay. <laughs> Hmm. We've got two stubs. <laughs> Only one of them is theme. Okay. <laughs> Wait, where's, where's stub going? <laughs> wow. People, oh, people, boy. No, I think there was a poll. Somebody put a, a poll up saying which, which thumb is Steve, and they were just like, no, it's got to go. The poll was overwhelmingly, it's got to go. I want to bring it back. No, no, but what was great about it is you found how comedy, you can you drove it into the ground and then found a new way. You like tunneled in a direction I didn't even know was possible. I'm a genius. That's I'm what happens genius. when the series go on about 10 too many uh, episodes. <laughs> so, yeah. And I, I had been in my apartment for a long time oh, at yeah. that point, all by myself. Yeah, it was just me and the cats at that point. That's point. right. Your wife was still in L.A. She, yeah, yeah. Albertina was back in, uh, in L.A. And it was just uh, me and the cats. And we did a lot of talking. And that's mm -hmm. how we came up with which theme is Stuv. Hmm. Or Stuv is theme. I can't remember. Well, it made me cry. Well, that's good stuff. God, it's I'm emotional. genius. All right. Yeah. What about Steve? What were your highlights this year? <laughs> Uh, well, my first one is kind of one of those things where it, it started as nothing and then grew into something. Um, oh, like that horse's was, penis. Like that horse's penis. Thank you. Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Nick's girlfriend sang uh, a little ditty about him called Vegan Vegan Man. And then um, yes. Zach sent it in. And then it got remixed by Bob from Hull. I did a mixture of the two. I used the original drawing with Bob from Hull's remix. And... Here it is. Vegan, vegan man, vegan, vegan man, vegan. 
vegan, vegan man. He only knows he's intensity. Vegan, vegan, vegan man. Vegan, vegan man. Vegan, vegan man. He only knows me your dairy. Vegan, vegan man. Yeah, so there it is. Vegan. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, that was great. That song gets in my head a lot. Sucks to my <laughs> really? chagrin. Nick, does really your girlfriend does. still sing the song around the house? Like whenever yeah, you're like absolutely. eating Satan or something? Yeah, well, yeah, while well, vacuuming, while preparing Satan. Yeah. Is, is, she, <laughs> is she vegan or no? No, no. But that's why she makes fun of me for this little 22 year old phase I'm going through. This vegan. You'll weird vegan snap thing. out of it. Yeah. You'll snap out of it soon yeah. enough. All right. What so else? For, do my you... next, for my next one, I think. Um, we need to set up what groping photographers were. I wasn't sure, you know, what's the best way to set it up? Where'd you guys find that? Well, it's this weird video that we got called Groping Photographers. And uh, I think the idea was that he would teach you how to make soft core pornography. And it was about like how to, th this is just a guess, by the way. It was about how to audition people and how to get good reactions and how to get good performances out of people. Nick, do you think so, that's accurate? Yeah, and so he would make them say the same lines over and over, but with different inflections on different words. But that was the video. It was so weird. You, you didn't know what you're watching. You I guess you thought you were watching softcore pornography, but you're watching an instructional video. It's really confusing. Yeah. So. so I'm going to play a quick clip of that to set up what my actual video is. So hold on. You said he stole the money. I did not say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I did not say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I did not say he stole the money. Mister, you said he stole the money. I did not say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. Cat tail. Mister, you said he stole the money. I didn't say he Total stole cat the move. money. Tess, you said. So that was the. That was the video. It's and so confusing. It's so yeah, weird. So confusing. The whole video is like that. Still don't but, know exactly what it was. But what I the video that I loved is um, I don't know how this got put to George whether George just took it on his own. But I love George's creativity, and he incorporated the Melindas and he turned this into a movie trailer. And this was one of my favorite videos of 2020. You said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. <laughs> you said he stole the money. I did not say he stole the money. <laughs> you said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I didn't say stole the money. You said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. You said he stole the money. I didn't say he stole the money. I like all the animals. I didn't say he stole the money. Cheese, cheese. I didn't say he stole the money. I said he only wants to save you money. Let me see that one. <laughs> no more questions. Oh, one more. I didn't say he stole the money. Oh. No DHK robot El Dinero. Stole the money. Stole the... <gasps> I never said he stole the money. <laughs> the Grove Interrogator. Oh. I never, I never said he stole the money. <laughs> stole me the money. <laughs> now, I think right. one, of, oh. one of you told it was like the day before, and you're like, cut these together. And so I called work and said, like, I can't come in tomorrow. Well, actually, I couldn't go in anywhere, but I have to go um, to my unpaid gig. My yeah. unpaid gig that I devoted 177 hours to this year. George, I didn't know you could do a thing with your eyebrow where like one eyebrow can go up. I was yeah. noticing that as well. Impressive. Yeah. It was, it was John Belushi. When I was like five, I saw it. And I practiced for hours. <laughs> well, Steve, what's your number one? 
my number one is I love the IMGs. I can't get enough of them, but one captured my heart more than any other. Rocks are done. Got to sleep. Bye. I mean, it's so short. It's so sweet. It's so good. It's so simple. It's so, and it just, it just sticks with you. That has yeah. stuck around for most of the year, actually. So, yeah, I mean, you make a strong argument for that. Um, all, all good ones, all three. Anyone, ones. yeah. So, yeah. Joe, do you want to go with your number one now? Well, th yeah, that's the thing. It's like their votes don't count. It's just you and I because we're the hosts of the show, right? So exactly. they can say whatever the hell they want, uh, but it doesn't matter because you and I were the real stars of the show, right, Nick? Yep, exactly. Yep, that's okay. my take on it too. <laughs> All right. Well, my number one was also an IMG. And IMG, I feel like IMGs are the big revelation of this year that we didn't know about these before a pandemic happened. And I think that I think that that's what defined this year for me, at least, was uh, the IMG. So IMG are accidental upload, uploaded videos. Uh, they usually start with IMG and they have four numbers. And I've recruited this team of IMG miners M-I-N-E-R-S, not O-R-S, E-R-S. They're harvesting IMGs out there in the world. And we're, we're trying to get up, we're doing IMG zero through 1,000. And we have, or, you know, through, no, 9,999. Yeah. And we're like a third of the way there and we've gotten so much good stuff. But the one that stuck out is this one called Taco Bell Game, Robo Edo sent this in it's img 1149 and it probably had four views and when it came out like when when it, when, it, when it was brought to my attention i played it and then i played it the next week and then i played it the next week and deconstructed it and i played it again and i just couldn't get enough of it and then uh i did a primetime special called america's funniest imgs and it was my number one img of the year and then i was thinking today i was like what video has brought me more joy this year and the answer is hands down Taco Bell game, hmm. IMG 1149, sent in by Robo Ito, four views on YouTube. And uh, let's just watch it wow. and uh, take it's a look. It's a great look. video. This is shocking, though. This is uh... really, this is shocking? Yeah. Well, uh, let's watch it, and then I okay. want to hear why you think it's shocking. Okay. Good for you. I have, as you guys can see, this is a Taco Bell icons that are all around. Okay, so I don't know if I had to set this up. <laughs> I don't think you do. I don't think it's, I do. It's, because, it's as confusing as we found it. This is how I received it. And Robo Eda yeah. called it like a guy trying to explain a Taco Bell game to people. Yeah. And just, just try to take in, if this is your first time watching it, try to take in all the things that are happening here. Because there's so much, so many things happening here. I'm going to back it up. All right. So degrooning, if you're watching, try to take in everything that's happening. That are all the board. Okay. Taco Bell has graciously given me permission to use their trademark icon in teaching all kinds of people. This one is the focus is money skills. So you can see we have a menu here when we land on it. I'll have things for you to do. These are really beautiful pictures. Here's an old Taco Bell menu from 1972. You guys remember Taco Bell back then, right? We do. So we do. I'll be right back. I forgot one of my things, okay? And then the perfect ending. And yeah. then the perfect ending. I forgot. I'll be right back. I forgot one of my things. Yeah. And it's just, it's just perfection. Because first of all, he invented this Taco Bell game. Like this Taco Bell game didn't exist. He right. invented it and he's explaining to them how to play the Taco Bell game. I mean, you just yes. watch the video. I don't have to explain this whole thing to you, but I'm just, There's I a just polyamorous like grandpa in it. Who's not listening <laughs> to the rules of the game. And then the teacher of the game forgot something. So it's, I get yeah, it. I mean, there's way more than that. I, I know. mean, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, so that's my number one. Why did it surprise you? Well, I just, it's a, uh, it's a low key video and I, I, I love it. It just, it's not like um, it's not a hit you over the head one, which I think is great. I think it's great. It's just well, you know that, my love of tedium. Yeah, I love yeah, tedium. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so it's, it ticks that box too for me. I went it's with a slow a, build. I surprised myself with my number one, and because it's not a bombastic hit you over the head video either. But the more I thought about it, the more I thought this is my top video. There's so much to it, and weirdly, we didn't show much of it on VCR party. We showed the whole thing. 
and an EP mode episode. It's Camp Cabbage. Camp Cabbage is a video <laughs> sent to us by Bob Hedges. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's a video souvenir from the 1990. And here's my reasoning. I'll, I'll tell you what it is, and I'll tell you my reasoning. It's the okay. 1990. I have the, I have the actual VHS somewhere yeah. around here. But, it's labeled Camp Cabbage, yeah. and it was a souvenir video that if you went to this convention at the birthplace of Cabbage Patch Kids in Georgia, you got to see the home and offices of Xavier Roberts, the creator. You got to meet him for an autograph session. It was a five, no, no, a seven day conference where you stayed in the town and there was activities and seminars every day. And then everybody got this fairly uh, cheaply produced souvenir video at the end. This is somebody's souvenir video. I mean, fairly cheaply produced. It was cheaply produced. It was somebody with a camcorder yeah. walking around on the tour. Right. Yeah. There, there was almost no voiceover to it some strange decisions and i didn't we didn't show this part on vcr party but there's a a signing party at the end where everybody got to meet xavier roberts i know we're gonna get flagged so we can't monetize this video because it's i mean got, it's got a camera never camera. have monetized this no i know <laughs> but it's it's gonna you're, people are gonna have to watch an ad before this episode because of the song in here and it's a dumb uh. Cabbage Patch Kids from a dumb a Cabbage Patch Kids album you know one of the songs that they put out yeah so they decided to put that on and um I, I maybe you'll get a small hint as to why this is my number one. This isn't the whole video, but uh, a minute and a half of it. There's someone who wants me and finds me and loves me each night in my cabbage patch dreams. Someone He's signing above the actual printed signature. when we had the open house everybody wanted to like kiss us and oh yeah have we a signed so many shirts that day yeah sign people's asses I like man's expression there Included, but the song ends and then it starts over. The same song starts over twice during this montage. cabbage and i'll tell you why i think for 1990 i told you i i that video made me long for public gatherings and conventions and um being able to get together in groups which is what they were doing at that you know for a, a weird thing that people are really into i miss that and also it was just very sweet and it had people who were genuinely enthusiastic about meeting Xavier Roberts and seeing how Cabbage Patch Kids were made. And I thought that it was a perfect antidote to all the terribleness of 2020. Yeah. And you know what else? I, th I think that uh, Bob Hedges, who sent that to us, he said that this perfectly combines Joe's love of tedium with Nick's love of, you know, elf shit, like Cabbage Patch yeah. dolls and kids and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, no, I, I, that may, it makes sense when he said it at first, I was a little shocked by it. And I watched the video and like, it's, it's good, but like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think yeah. if, if anybody has not subscribed to our Patreon at the $10 level to get these EP mode episodes, do it to watch the Camp Cabbage one. It's my favorite that one was we've a fun done. One. Yeah, you're right. That is a really good just video. Do, watch the whole thing with us and then you can unsubscribe or whatever. But I, I think it's worth it just for that video. It's, it's my favorite one of 2020. Okay, how do we how do we determine what's actual number one? Because we all have our own number ones. Do we do we just do a vote? Maybe we should have talked about this before we started recording the show. <laughs> I, I'd be curious to hear what uh, George and Steve think, having seen ours. Uh, just to recap. Yeah, I would love um, to hear. Yeah, mine was uh, Camp Cabbage, uh, the uh, Magical Rainbow Sponge, Supercut, and uh, Close Proximity Pirate. But shouldn't Techniques. it be between our two number ones? Yeah, but Not our top threes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they could pick a dark horse, though, I would think, you know. Okay. Well, seeing the signing above the ass reminded me that uh, Joe showed a video of he made his own music video of All Star featuring his ass, right? That's oh, correct. That's that somehow number one. Yeah. But um, but 
I have to say that the IMG was the most expensive IMG because Nick ended up buying the game, that <laughs> that Taco Bell game. So in that way, I don't know. Yeah, and it's I, over. It's over there, sitting underneath the table. It was like one hundred fifty dollars, right? It was one hundred fifty dollars, and it's so heavy, and it's sitting under. <laughs> it's collecting dust over there. We haven't played it once. It took months to make. It's and, the worst uh, purchase we've ever made. I would say more so than the Garfield belt. Well, I, you know, I was going to say, remember when we got the Brewer, uh, the the cutouts in the yes. in the outfield, yeah, and they never sent me any photos of them being out <laughs> in the outfield. Them. I just yeah. sent them two hundred bucks and the photos, and then never heard a single thing. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then I watch I watch baseball games. Never saw Dark Lord blood out in the stands. Mm. So that mm. might be the worst purchase. Mm. Taco Bell, I think, is probably number two. Garfield Garfield belt. Garfield belt no, that's that's not a bad purchase. Okay. So. All right. Well, so what are you saying, George, that, that it's the Taco Bell um, game? Yeah. No, you're a VHS show. The Camp Cabbage has to win. Hmm. Wow. Just on a VHS technicality. Steve, what do you think? I think the Camp Cabbage is the better video. I think IMGs in totality were the bigger thing for 2020, but I've got to give it to Camp Cabbage for the actual video. Wow. Shocking. Interesting. Shocking. I mean, I I appreciate the Taco Bell as well. I appreciate that it represents IMGs. But uh, yeah, I mean, I got to stick with my uh, my horse and go with Camp Cabbage. Okay. Well, just for the record, I mean, I I respect that call. Mm -hmm. I don't love that video. Like, I don't really want to watch that video ever again. Like, I've already seen it and I get it. And it's just not, it doesn't have the replayability that uh, Life on the Farm has or that even taco bell game has which like when we're done recording this i'll probably watch it again because it's that good um so my vote goes with taco bell game but i'm clearly outvoted here so we'll go with cabbage cat uh what is it called camp, camp, camp cabbage, cabbage. I, don't even wow. remember the name. I think right. i think beginning of the year i'd not i would not have thought camp cabbage would, would have done it but i like how unique it is it's, it's almost one of a kind and uh, i'm proud to call that uh Video of the year. I'll be interested to see what the Melinda's think about that. I mean, I think it would have been a bold move for all of us to vote for Taco Bell game and just to change things up because 2020 was just like an outlier year. We let's have an outlier winner, but you guys have spoken. Yep. uh, And uh, that's cool. That's fine. I even made uh, a note that we should make Camp Cabbage shirts. Like at that final logo of Camp Cabbage, like I want one of those shirts. I did. I even made a note. Camp Cabbage shirts? Okay. All right. We can also make Taco Bell game shirts, too. <laughs> <laughs> we could. We got the game now. We could make a, we could get something out of that. Maybe try to... Uh, maybe that's our ticket out of this hellhole. Okay. But... I'm, not ups- I'm not upset. Uh, that, I think uh, you should have chose a better IMG. I think there were better IMGs out there. If, you, uh, if, well, you'd, if you'd said strut that ass or Rodney <laughs> Stanger or the Laws, I would have gone with you. But it was just it was it was it's, what it's I had hard to, to choose, choose videos that have gone viral like through other ways though. Exactly. Too. Like, no, I, you would. You it has to be personally found, you know, or or like yeah. So like I mean, to me, the funniest video is the guy falling off his chair while playing the guitar. Like I could watch that a million times, but that I don't have a personal connection to that. That was. Went big on Facebook, you know what I, I mean? I mean, Taco Bell game like that, we, we all watched that for the first time together, and maybe four other people had watched it before, and it's probably the guy who uploaded who accidentally uploaded it, you know? Yeah. Like, that, that. that's our video. Yeah, So and, and likewise, I think Camp I Cabbage. I think, I think so, yeah, Camp yeah, Cabbage. I think called. AMGs was the bigger, like, it was the biggest thing that happened to VCR Party in 2020. Like, I love IMGs. Absolutely. It was, and it was, Do you want to change your vote, Steve? No, I'm going to still oh. go with the... <laughs> With Camp it, was, Cabbage. it was really necessity is the mother of invention because we didn't have access to the office regularly, and I I I think IMGs is amazing. And well, maybe- it, it really it really gave you the feeling of going into a thrift store and finding something new on the shelf, yes. and that's 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 what we missed this year. And so, and, and one of the best things about IMGs, I will say, is just when you before I even see the video, when you just read the title, I get excited because the titles are sometimes just yeah. so amazing. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you guys can all change your votes right now. Like, uh, and if you don't, then I'm going to put an investigation in. I'm going to I'm going to call for an investigation. The commissioner. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to call for an investigation. And, and Nick, I have to say, if they secure my emails, he's going to find out about all what right. you gave us. So just either come okay. clean now, or we'll stick with it. Well, for now, provisionally, we're saying Camp Cabbage, the VCR Cabbage. party, 
2020 video of the year. Thanks to Bob Hedges for that. Thank you all for tuning in. And let us know in the comments what your favorite video of 2020 was. And uh, if we were wrong or if we were right, let us know. That's uh, uh, show us your 2020 raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. <laughs>
selling drugs to all the losers, mad Buddha abuser. But they don't know about your stress-filled day. Baby on the way, mad bills to pay. That's why you drink Tangeray, so you can reminisce and wish you wasn't living so devilish. Shit. I remember I was just like you, smoking blunts with my crew, flipping over 62s, cause GED wasn't B-I-G. I had to get P-A-D, that's why my moms hate me. She was forced to kick me out, no doubt. It works as a music video. It's got the visuals. It does. It's like a Terry Gilliam movie. It is. But Trump's trying to stop my flow. And what they don't know will show on the autopsy. When to see Poppy, the cop me a brick. Ask for some time. That sample's perfect. Yeah. Smoking mad new ports because I'm doing court for an assault. And I caught in Bridgeport, New York. Catch me if you can like the gingerbread man. You better have your gat in hand. Because man. See you later with all this activity. <laughs> Sooner or later, with they, he effects. mixed that in as well. So that was from a Wisconsin Dells video yeah. called uh, "Dining Delights." Yep, it was the segment called "Dining Delights." Yeah, um, I, I have three other mix. I mean, I'm this. Is, I just grabbed random ones, just so. Yeah, I, I mean, this is no particular order. Uh, Nick wrote made a New Age mir- uh, miracle mix m- mixed oh. with our seminars video with a guy who was talking about how you shouldn't party. Uh, Wade, also known as Kafka, was right on SoundCloud. He he made I found a uh, FBI warning video that had the coolest song, and I put that up. And he took that song and he mixed it with our TikTok video, uh, not TikTok, the popular thing, TikTok. Uh, <laughs> the <laughs> a, clown puppet based How to Tell Time video. I was hoping you would jump in. Right yeah. There. Uh, and then the last one is Roller Coaster. Our buddy Dave sent in this video that he had shot of a local talent show at a county fair, small town, and this this uh, probably sixteen year old girl was singing a song called Roller Coaster that she made up. She was singing a cappella, and he's like, "I would love to hear music behind it." And his two brothers, Jonathan and Tim, they they backed it up with our Rubik's Cube video that we have. The, oh, I forgot Nick, you, about this one. Earlier. Yeah. Yes, and it's genuinely a good song. Like, it should be in the top 40. So that's Roller Coaster. I'm going to show you the three in uh, a mix right here. Nick Grote. Oh, cool. Fine. The world thinks laugh, 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 ha, 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 ha. Party, 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 laugh, 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 ha, ha. Source, 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 sources. The world thinks laugh, 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 ha, 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 ha. Party, 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 laugh, 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 ha, 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 ha. Party, 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 party. So good. Again, the visuals go perfectly. I love horses. All right, here's Wade. Kafka was right. It's the FBI warning song. Here's a roller coaster. Jonathan and Tim. <laughs> I mean, bonus points for remixing two of the videos together on all these. Yeah, and those two guys, they did so many. They did the uh, club remix too. Yes, you know, the club. Like, remix. It's like an original song that they right. created. Using, using club, so. samples from the club. Wow. I, I, we have the most create, like the, we have the best Melindas of all the Melindas in, in the universe. So, and, and uh, we also, Joe, you've been putting up some of those remixes and other just jingles and stuff on our, our yeah, song, I'm a little bit behind. Club. I have to put some new ones up, but okay. like that roller coaster one that's up there, you have to listen to the whole thing. Then, all yeah, most of them are up there. There's some that I have to update. So, but uh, yeah, SoundCloud, I think it's Found Footage Festival. You can find us. The uh, EP mode we mentioned, uh, I think. I, I really want to do sort of the best of New Year's Eve videos. What do you think of that idea? For Because it's going to be yeah, on I mean, New as, Year's Eve. As long as you do all the work. Are you sure. willing to do all the work? Well, here's one. I, I'll, let me just show a little bit of this. This is what you're going to see Thursday night. It's from a public access show called 
this week in Joe's basement, and uh, counting down to 1990 here. Public access show from Chicago. Good looking, Joe. You literally watched this countdown for about a half hour to the new year. Down or up? Uh, this one actually counts down. Okay. Weirdly, yeah. More it of counts a down from 30 to zero. More of a traditionalist. Yeah. All right, so that's just a little bit of some of the uh, the New Year's <laughs> Eve footage you might be seeing on our New Year's Eve special. Now, will we watch that? Will we watch like five minutes of it? Yeah, we won't watch probably all of it, but there's more parts of that special, too. That okay. We'll together and do yeah, so let's do that as long as you're willing to do all the work for it. George found some videos for it, too, that it's people talking about, what was it, how bad Y2K is going to be? Yes. Okay. On a scale of one to five, okay. and they give a variety of answers. All right, so that's going to be a fun one. And uh, uh, this Saturday, we're going to take a two-week hiatus from Saturday Morning Cartoons, but this Saturday, we got a New Year's Eve episode we, there is a New Year's Eve episode of a Saturday morning cartoon called Street Sharks. And um, do I have it here? I yeah, think I have so. it here. Yeah, yeah, I have it right here. Yeah, here's and, Street Sharks. But the thing I'm excited about is Jason Griffith, who is the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog, both in one of the cartoons and uh, in several of the video games. He's done tons of cartoon voiceovers, specifically like English versions of like Korean cartoons. And uh, when I told him, hey, do you want to come on and watch Street Sharks with us? He goes, I used to work with the director of Street Sharks. So see, I, I want to have him on because I want to talk to him about what it's like to be a voiceover person because I think that would be the number one job in the uh, like in the world. Like that would yeah. be the best job. You just show up in your sweatpants and you get to like read lines that you're just you're unshowered and you can just like read lines. The thing is, yeah, you get multiple takes. Jason's done a career too, has a career in voiceover, but he's also on camera because he's a super handsome guy. He might be our most handsome guest. I. We'll see, um, but he's probably up there, right? I'm trying to think. Yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, let, give me some time to think about it, and I'll I'll get back to you. I'll I'll, I'll text you later tonight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> let me know. I'll be, be, be keep me up. So anyway, that's this Saturday. Then we'll take a little bit of a break. We're, and like other stuff, like Willie's you know, is on hiatus for. I wonder. I wonder, I wonder like, do we want to uh, like call an end to Saturday? I mean, like, I feel like are we at the point where we're like we're ready to move on to a new show? Should we do a Plunkett show or something? Like. Well, we could we could change it up, but I think we got to return to it because I just talked to Robin Bougie. You know him, the uh, Vancouver um, video yeah. collector, artist, comic book Cinema artist. Sewer. Yeah. Cinema Sewer. Yeah. Cinema His wife does backgrounds for My Little Pony, and she wants to do the show. And specifically, she's now doing a lot of dinosaur art. And um, she had uh, he said there's two terrible um dinosaur cartoons like okay. dino dino writers and some other ones so no I, yeah well that's what i'm saying I mean, we have like four or five guests that i'm excited about yes. having on coming up there's a guy who actually wrote a book on saturday morning cartoons that he's going to be on and i'm excited about that but um but it, it just has to i i want to be i, I just don't want to go over i don't want to go too far you know what i mean just like oh they're still doing this thing you don't want to jump the street shark well because yeah exactly <laughs> I just feel like this this show could take off an Eclipse VCR party at some point. It's more universal. But uh, here's the thing. I found out, I was showing these guys before we started recording. So um, Warner Brothers owns Hanna-Barbera cartoons now. We figured out we can play Warner, we can play Hanna-Barbera cartoons um, now um, without getting takedown notices. And uh, buried deep on their web store, you can get DVDs of complete seasons of these. So I just kind of went nuts. They're really cheap, and I ordered a bunch. So let me just show oh, you well, some of so them. We're going to be doing this show for the next seven years. Like, you're going to be doing Willie's Garage. Basically, yeah. I mean, so you tell me if you are want to watch Speed Buggy. I've got uh, Speed Buggy. Oh, boy. I've got Shirt Tales. we got Shirt Tales and one I've never heard of called Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kids. It's a There's a dog here. Oh, I saw that with Robert Redford and Paul Newman. Yeah, no. Yeah, I've seen that. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what this is. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is not the regular Globetrotters cartoon. This is the one where they're also superheroes, the Super Globetrotters. We got Jabberjaw. Okay. We got the, we got the Funky Phantom. Oh, boy. A Scooby Doo ripoff. We got the Hair Bear Bunch. I feel I feel like I just got handed a jail sentence, like a <laughs> like a prison sentence of of life in jail. And we got uh, the complete 
New Adventures of Gilligan, Wheelie and the Chopper Bunch, just to name a few. So <laughs> I mean, just uh, like like forty five seconds ago, I was saying, hey, maybe we should stop doing this, and then Nick rattled off fifteen fucking uh, cartoons. That plus, we- <laughs> I, I found a new type of cereal, so I mean, we get, I'm getting a second wind. <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll revisit it. Uh, people oh, seem Jesus. To, seem, people seem to be enjoying that one, so we'll see. I want to thank everybody for uh, for supporting us this year because it was real rough. We couldn't. Our main way we make a living is through touring. That got canceled this year, like everything else. So, just like a lot of other people who are in, I, I don't even want to call this the entertainment industry, but whatever the hell we do, <laughs> it's not show business. It's that, but we couldn't do it the anymore. Industry. This yeah, is the industry. This Nick. is the industry. Yeah. So. Uh, Thank yeah. you for uh, the support over the years. No, I told you, I put together this last, so Zach Champagne oh, put yeah. together, he, he wrote a, a, a piano piece to Auld Lang Syne. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Auld Lang Syne. And uh, he made his own lyrics to it. He, he did a longer version. I cut it down a little bit. Uh, I'll put the whole thing up on SoundCloud one of these days. But, uh, and then I put some video to it. And I told you earlier, I was putting this together. And I was you know, a little misty eyed. I'm not, I'm not a big crier. I cried at the, cried a kid when I watched it in fourth grade and I really haven't cried since I get like sometimes I get a little feeling in my stomach uh but I got that feeling in my stomach and maybe got a little misty eyed when I was putting this together so yes thank you Melinda's for all your support thank you George and Steve for all that you guys do and uh thanks Nick I guess uh sure we have to thank each other okay yeah uh all right so here's uh thank you zach for putting this together this song together we'll be right back uh, right after that everybody in 2021 that's all, that's all that's it better luck next time chucky if we'd Never been prepared, that, we could have been if we'd been wait 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 if we'd been prepared this year we could have done better remember to support your fellow melinda's go to bosskittyshop.com and uh rocks are done gotta sleep bye if you work on it really hard you can do it How's everybody doing? Having a good time? Yeah. <laughs> Any Italians out there? Yeah. Come on, let's see your raviolis. Show us your raviolis. The rocks are done and got asleep. That's it. That it a done. That's it. That it a done. We'll play a game of Taco Bell and explain to everyone. I'll be right back. For all Melinda's and Steve and George. For all Melinda's, we'll toast a glass of gray. Juice for all Melinda. When we return, Dr. Selmer will complete the bunion surgery. Yes, those are his pajamas he's wearing. All right, I gotta go. That's all. That's it. Let me see that one. Rocks are done. Gotta sleep. Bye. That's it. That it done. We did our best. If we'd been prepared, we could have done better. What do you think about Bibra? About what? In a My not in for yuck anymore. Ooh. That's all I'm doing. Cheerio, Tinker Tinkerbell! We'll be right back right after that. And Kurt Polstad, the real great guy. Nice, nice.